tying a little soft tackle fly this week. This is called a partridge in yellow. If you've ever done any soft, soft tackle fishing, then you're already aware that this particular fly, as well as its cousin, the partridge in orange and partridge in green, are uh, tra just traditional flies and exceptional soft tackle flies. It's a very, very simple fly, very basic, has a silk body, silk head, and a polymered partridge hackle for the collar. When I tie this today, I'm going to tie up two different versions. They're pretty much the same thing, but I just want to show you uh, and talk about those different versions and why I tie them. There's also a number of other versions that people will tie with this fly, and I will highlight and talk about some of those as well. Now I'll be doing a number of soft tackle videos over the coming weeks, and the reason is I will be attending a tie-a-thon in May the St. Joseph River Valley Fly Fishers will be hosting a tie-a-thon and they are needing some soft tackle flies. So I will be donating a bunch of soft tackle flies as well as tying them in May at that tie-a-thon. I will include some more information about that as well as links to the tie-a-thon and information later on in the video. But right now, I just want to go ahead and get started tying the partridge in yellow. As I mentioned, there's a number of ways to tie the partridge in yellow. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways and then talk about some of the other variations about this fly. Before I get to talking about some of those things, I want to just go ahead and tie one just so that you see how it's done because they're very, very simple, straightforward flies. This hook is a Mustad 3906. It's a typical nymph and wet fly hook. You could also use, say, a Mustad 3399. This is a size 14. I'm using a Pearsall's Gossamer Silk for this. And because it's silk, we have to wax it. So I'm going to use some Vineyards tying wax. It comes in just a little cake like this. I'm going to run my thread through the wax a couple of times, and then I'm going to run the thread through my fingers to just kind of smooth off the wax as well as make certain it's all distributed evenly. We'll attach our thread about a half an eye length behind the eye of the hook and start advancing our thread down the hook shank. When I get to about the point of the hook, I'll go ahead and remove the tag. Keep advancing my thread down the hook and touching turns. I get to about halfway between the point and the barb of the hook. Some people will go all the way down the shank and make a little bit longer body. You could also tie this on, say, a Mustad 3906B, which is a little bit longer if you want a longer body fly. At this stage, you can do a couple of different things. If you want, you can put a rib on this by just using your thread, your tying thread, just twisting it, wrapping forward, and putting a rib on it if you want to. The traditional partridge in yellow that I am aware of did not have a rib, pronounced rib, say, on it. Uh, it should say the, the traditional partridge in yellow did not have a pronounced rib, per se, on it. So I'm just going to wrap my thread back forward, touching turns, just to make a smooth body, as smooth as you can with the tying silk, ending up right where I tied in or attached my uh, thread. For the hackles on this, I'm going to use a Hungarian partridge. It's where the partridge comes and the partridge in yellow. You're going to be using some of the smaller feathers for this size 14 right down here, the base of the neck. I'll select my feather. And I'm going to Peel away the fluff back here. Ideally, you want a feather where the longest barbs are going to be about a shank length long. You want them to extend when they're extending out. You want them where they're tied in to extend anywhere from about 
just inside the gap of the hook to maybe behind the bend of the hook a little bit. Using a small set of hackle pliers, I'm going to grab the tip of that feather. I'm going to stroke these fibers back. This will clear away the tip, cut away the excess, and I will tie in just the very tip of that feather. I'm only going to put in about three or four wraps moving down to the eye of the hook. The one catch, especially when you're tying these and they're, they're very small feathers, is that it's pretty delicate. I'm not worried about breaking it so much as if I pull too hard on the feather, I'll pull the tip out from under those wraps. I'll take the other end with my hackle pliers and I'll start stroking the fibers back and palmering this around. It's not critical that you stroke them back out of the way as you're wrapping as much as each wrap. You can stroke all of them out of the way to make certain that none of them get trapped pointing forward. Generally, you're only going to get two or three wraps of that feather in. You can, if you want to, see that's where I lost hold of the end in my hackle pliers. I wasn't focusing on what I was doing. If you want, if you want a sparser fly, then you can only put, say, two wraps like this in and then tie that off. In this case, you could also have peeled off some of those before tying that in, but in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap that in. Gives me a few more legs to it. Trim away the excess. Here's where you need to be kind of careful because it's real easy to get too many thread wraps in with this silk thread and this little hook. So just put enough in to bind everything down and start making just a little bit of a head. And then I'll finish up the head with a three or four turn whip finish. That's all you need. Tighten that up. Cut away my thread. And then before I put any head cement on here, I'm going to fluff out these fibers a little bit. The more you can get them kind of perpendicular to the hook shank, the better, the more they'll swim in the water. I'm going to apply some head cement. The head cement that I'm using is a fly tight head cement. It's very thin, but it will soak into the silk and in the base of those feather fibers and help to keep them in that perpendicular position. So that is your basic partridge in yellow right there. Again, this is with the Pearsall's silk. The interesting thing is in researching this fly and tying some of these up, and I've tied a number of these over the years, but it was kind of fun doing some research into this. I was reading a number of different books, and one of them that I enjoyed reading is Two Centuries of Soft Tackle Flies. If you can see that, I'll put a uh, picture of this in the video. This is by Sylvester Neems. Let's see if I can get that in there. Anyway, on page 128, he references a book, Making and Using the Fly and the Leader, written by Paul H. Young in 1938. Paul Young talks about the partridge in orange, the partridge in yellow, and the partridge in green in this book. These are three very, very popular soft tackle flies, as I mentioned. Very, very simple, but the partridge in orange, partridge in yellow, and partridge in green were very, very popular. I'll show you the orange one here if you can see this. The interesting thing is these were tied with the body was uh, yarn. And I think it was just a thin single strand of yarn that they twisted up into a cord. But the body has definitely more of a segmented look to it with the, the yarn. So I found that rather interesting. I think it, it morphed over the years into using the silks because back in those days, a lot of flies were tied with silk. 
and it's a very, very sparse and simple body. So that's the basic partridge and yellow. You could do a partridge and orange and partridge and green, the same thing. And now I'm going to show you how another method that I have used for tying the partridge in yellow, uh, which gives it a little bit smoother body. For this other method of tying the partridge in yellow, I'm still using the same hook, the 3906B, size 14. The main difference is here I'm using a UTC 70 denier, 70 denier in a yellow um, because I can flatten this out. It gives me a smoother body. Um, if you like the segmented look with the silk, you can certainly do that. But I just wanted to show this because I think it uh, also makes a very, very nice looking fly. So we'll start our thread in the same place, maybe about an eye length, uh, half an eye length behind the eye of the hook. And here, I'm going to keep my tag end of the thread going, but I'm going to give it a counterclockwise spin to flatten that thread out a little bit. And as I go down the hook shank, I'll give it a few more counterclockwise spins to flatten that thread out. And this is just going to help in giving me a nice, smooth body. I have seen the partridge in yellow and partridge in orange tied with floss. So if you want, you could use a, a rayon floss or even a silk floss. So the body could be comprised of that. On your way back up, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to flatten that thread out. As you can see, it's kind of even spreading out a little on me. We're going to flatten that thread out and bring that back up to create a nice smooth body. The one thing using the silk and or this thread you'll notice is the bronze hook can tend to darken up the body. If you want to work around that, you could put a base layer of white thread down or you could even go back down one more time. Back down to the end of the shank and then back up. It thickens it up just a little bit so it's not real, real slender, but it is a smoother body as opposed to a, a thicker segmented body like the, the Pearsall silk. Then the fly is tied essentially the same at this stage where I'm going to tie in the hackle. I'll give my bobbin a clockwise twist just to twist that thread up a little bit. That will help me to tie that in. Select a feather and prep it the same way. Tie the feather in by the tip. Just a few wraps. The UTC thread's just a little thinner than the Pearsall's silk, so you can get away with a few more wraps on this without bulking the fly up too much. And then this is just wrapped in the same as before. So the only difference between this and the other version that I did is using the thread as the a, a uh, nylon thread, thinner thread for a sparser body. That's really it. Other versions of this fly that I have seen tied will include a rib. I've seen some that have a wire rib on it. Um, quite often I see a version where right behind the hackle there is just a small clump of dubbing. Usually a hair's mask or something like that uh, right behind the hackle. But the traditional I should say, as far as I found, the most traditional partridge in yellow is not tied with any kind of thorax and it is, does not have a rib on it. Uh, it is just the tying thread and the hackle. Again, you do want to take some care not to get too much of a bulky head behind the eye of the hook. This is a real sparse fly that just comes alive in the water. 
So that's two versions of the uh, partridge in yellow. And I had mentioned in the beginning that I'm tying a number of soft tackles because there is a tie-a-thon that the St. Joseph River Valley fly fishers in South Bend, Indiana are hosting in May. They need a bunch of different flies tied. If you haven't been to a tie-a-thon, basically all it is is a bunch of people show up, they tie flies all day, have some fun learning some things, meeting some people, exchanging things, and all the flies are then donated to a worthy cause. In this case, they're going to a number of youth camps to, to help uh, young people learn how to fly fish. So anyway, um, I'll have a link in the description down below uh, with, you can download the PDF if you want to, if you're interested in the tie-a-thon and want to participate. They also take donations. So if you want to tie up a few flies and send them in, there is a list of the flies that they're looking for. One of them was a soft tackle. So I'm actually tying up a number of different soft tackles for the tie-a-thon and I'll have some to donate as well as then go in and tie on that day in May. So this is the partridge in yellow. It's a wonderful little trout fly. I never really tried this in warm water because it's so small I think you're going to be picking up just tons of little panfish. I mean it would be a good panfish fly. I uh, wouldn't mind trying some of these and say it's size 8 or 6 just to see what they do. But it's a wonderful trout fly if you have some trout streams near you. And it's definitely one if you are into the soft tackles, uh, even wet flies that you should have in your box. That's the partridge in yellow. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.